you know, I think on the whole, yeah, you can say that both are guilty of some charges, not necessarily of the same charge. That is, in, in any kind of peace negotiation, in any kind of conflict resolution, it takes two to tango, so to speak. There is no doubt in my mind that Israel has and continued to contribute to the deadlock in these negotiations. And there is also no doubt in my mind that the Palestinian Authority, uh, because of their uh, continuing similar public narrative, insisting on things that they know they are and cannot be realized like the returns of the Palestinian refugees to Israel proper, the university putting a serious obstacle in, uh, you know, in the resumption uh, of peace negotiation. But one thing that should be also clear, I think the continuing expansion of Israeli settlement, that is really uh, probably one of the most critical obstacles in making any progress toward a two-state solution. Because you might say that the Palestinians, you know, wake up each morning and say, well, if Israel is, uh, agrees to a two-state solution, how can we have a state, independent, democratic, Palestinian state when our land is being uh, chewed up, I mean, uh, a next piece by piece every single day? And that's, this is a valid argument. So I think if Israel wants to resume the peace negotiation in earnest, they will have to begin by freezing the settlement and by refusing to build a new one. And in return, of course, the Palestinians will have to make also a significant gesture so be, to begin to develop some rules of engagement whereby the two sides can actually sit and negotiate if they are committed, that is, to a two-state solution. The first one, if Israel is to take unilateral steps, Israel did so before. It took unilateral steps when it withdrew from Lebanon in 2000 and uh, under the cover of the night. It did the same thing uh, by withdrawing from Gaza in 2005. And both these unilateral you know, moves taken by Israel did not produce calm. And the tension between Israel and the Palestinians, the tension between Israel and Hezbollah and Lebanon, really has uh, some, some time increased rather than decreased. So unilateral you know, action by Israel in the West Bank would not, would not produce any better picture. To deal with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, as we stated earlier, required both sides to sit down and negotiate. Any action or any unilateral action Israel wants to take, it will still have to be negotiated with the Palestinians. That is, if you historically, if you look, for example, why the withdrawal from Gaza did not produce any progress toward peace, is because Israel did not sit for a moment to negotiate in terms of the withdrawal with Mahmoud Abbas. It was unilateral, there was no agreement, and then we saw the result of what happened in Gaza. And now you might say the same thing with, with the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinians are getting tired. They do not want to wait any longer. Will they continue to be silent and for how long? And that is really our concern today. In my view, they may wait another month, another two, another six months, until perhaps after the American election. But when they watch around them and they see Arab youth are rising against their government and are dying by the hundreds if not the thousands, day in and day out. They ask themselves the basic simple question. Why should we continue to live under occupation? And, and so for them it is even larger, larger question because at least these Arabs in Syria, Egypt and elsewhere rose their own government and they were able to achieve and would be achieving something. Not to speak of occupation. So this is a non-starter for Israel, and I think the, the time has come for the Israelis and the Palestinians to realize that time is running out, and if they want to avoid future conflagration, a future extremely violent between the two, violent, you know, crisis between the two sides, they better start negotiation as soon as, soon as possible toward achieving peace.